Bible, a light on my pathway to shine. And it keeps me so happy, always so happy. God's wonderful book, Divine. Sometimes while you're up there preaching, or standing up there talking, thinking about jerking it over there. I looked up there when Miss, Miss Michelle was singing this morning. Not only was it not centered, you know, you can see it's not here and there, but it was crooked. Uh-huh. <laughs> all right, good evening. Let's all turn to page two. Page two, and let's all stand. And we'll sing the first, second, and last verses of Glory to His Name. Glad that you've chosen to be back, that you braved the weather to get back here. Amen. <laughs> just, just nasty outside. But it's, it's nice and warm in the house of the Lord. Amen. All right. Is anybody, anybody cold? Anybody cold? So y'all know better than answer that question. Miss Christie is. Come see me, Miss Christie. Come up here with me. Oh, she'll be up here in just a minute. She's yeah. singing the special. She'll figure, oh, yeah. she'll, she'll figure that one out here in just a few minutes. Your hands are cold. I, well, I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to say what everybody used to tell me about cold hands. But anyway, all right. <laughs> I got the I got the look. I got the look. Anyway, all right. Let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask the Lord to bless the services today. Looking forward to what the Lord's going to do. Father, we are so thankful for uh, this day. Thank you for the blessings you've given us. What a joy it is to be back in your house. Thank you for those that have joined with us tonight. Pray that you'll help us as we look into your Word once again. You'll give us wisdom and understanding. Help us as we worship you tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you can be seated. Let's do remember to pray for Brother Wink. Uh, after some investigation and some uh, 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 calling in favors from a friend, uh, we did find information about, about Brother Wink. So uh, as of fr uh, yesterday, uh, as of yesterday, he was back in ICU. Uh, they did get him out just for a little, but they did put him back in ICU uh, has good days and bad days. Today is a little bit, or yesterday was a little bit better day uh, than than uh, previously. But you continue to pray for him. Just a lot of things going on with Brother Wink, um, so continue to remember him. Uh, I know that would be a blessing to uh, the family. So we do want to remember them uh, in our prayers. Uh, I, I want to give you some information. I'm just going to throw these numbers at you real quick. We'll come back and talk about this in detail after the service. But we kind of mentioned this this morning. Uh, the, there's uh, $102.70. Amen. I got the paper right here. Too. Uh, $102.70 that is left over from designated offerings from last year. And I'm going to tell you what they were from. Uh, $27.70 of that came from those Bibles. Uh, I purchased two Bibles for our seniors. Uh, and when they came in, I inadvertently uh, ordered super giant, huge, large print 
Uh, and you have to have, is that one of them? Miss Christie is actually carrying it with her. That is, a, bless her heart. That thing is huge. Uh, and, and I just didn't feel like that would be something that our seniors needed to be toting around. Uh, so I ordered two more. Uh, and then two uh, folks in the church decided they wanted those other Bibles, so they purchased them. Well, the difference between the Bibles was $27.70, right? So that was sitting there. Uh, and then we did uh, pizza for uh, the Calvert City Convalescent Center, uh, and we had $50 more come in than what we spent on the pizza. So there's $50 sitting there for that. And then we had rented the pavilion at Mike Miller Park uh, before COVID hit. Uh, and we were going to try to, and then we didn't get to go for, I forget what the exact reason was the first time we missed it, but we had to postpone it, and then COVID hit, and uh, it just worked out to where they just refunded us the money. Uh, so that was $25. So that's where that $102 came from. Uh, what I'd like to do is talk to you about taking that 102 adding some to it, and sending to Brother Landingen uh, to help with his, with his doctor bills. But um, uh, I'll give you one more big number. And then we'll talk about this after service uh, in a little more detail. Right now, as, as of the end of the year, and I, I kind of want to do that end of the year number because that means we kind of got a clean slate from here uh, to work with. At the end of the year in the, in the missions fund, there's $5,216.78. Now, if you took out about $2,500 of that for a missions conference, which is what we, that's in there for, that still leaves twenty-five, at least twenty-five, twenty-seven hundred dollars sitting there. Uh, so there's plenty of money in the mission fund to be able to help him, which is what that money's sitting there for. Anyway, so uh, I'm going to put this right here. So maybe I will see it at the end of the service, and we'll talk about that a little bit more. Uh, that may have opportunity to help there. Uh, uh, read the thank you card from Miss Diane this morning. Uh, uh, just Miss Diane, thank you again for those kind words. Uh, it's a joy to be able to, to help and be able to be uh, a blessing to our folks. Uh, do pray for uh, Brother John's brother, Rob. I understand he's getting out tomorrow, possibly. Brother Sam was telling me all the details before service, so we're thankful for that. Amen. Do continue to pray for him. He has been a sick young man. I'm going to say young man because he's my age. <laughs> Amen. Uh, he, has been, <laughs> he has been a sick young man. Uh, you pray for him. I, I know they would appreciate all of your prayers. Uh, and all of the, you know, he's still got a long way to go. I still got a lot of things that are going on, but you pray for him as well. All right. We're, we're going to look forward to what the Lord's going to do in our services tonight. Looking forward to a good time. It's good to see the Hensons this morning and praying for them, praying for the family, the loss of his grandmother. Um, you continue to remember that family as well. Continue to pray for Miss Phyllis. I know I uh, asked her how she was doing when she came in. She smiled real big and she said, I feel good. The doctors are saying she's got some problems, but she feels good. Amen. Uh, she's looking at, at some changes in medications and uh, trying to work on a heart issue they, they, uh, that she's dealing with. So you pray for her. Uh, I know that'd be a blessing there as well. You grab your hymn book and we're going to go back and sing a little bit more. Uh, let's see, let's enjoy the Lord and worship Him in song. All right. Well, you can remain seated and turn to page three seventy-seven. Page three seventy-seven. We'll sing the first, second, and last verses of "Rescue the Perishing."
turn to page 30. Page 30, and let's all stand. We'll sing the first, second, and last verses of Nothing But the Blood. Savior and he's in love with me. He's with me from day to day. What a friend is he. Watches over me while I sleep. Hears me when I pray. I'm as happy as I can be and I now can say somebody loves me and answers my prayer. I love somebody. I know he cares. Somebody tells me not to repine That somebody is Jesus and I know he's mine You'll be happy if you will let Jesus have his way He has work for us all to do every passing day Feed the hungry and cheer the sad for the sinner pray You'll have joy that you never had and you Say, somebody loves me, answers my prayer. I love somebody, I know he cares. Somebody tells me not to repine. That somebody is Jesus and I know he's mine. Then at last when our work is done, he will call us home. To a mansion he has prepared, never more to roam. We'll sit down by the riverside, cares all pass away. And with never a pain to bear, what a happy day. Somebody loves me, answers my prayer. I love somebody, I know he cares. Somebody tells me not to repine. That somebody is Jesus and I know he's mine. Amen. Amen. Take your Bible tonight, if you will. Turn to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter number 13. I know, I remember... Uh, that we just went through 1 Corinthians 
uh, all the way. I, I do remember that. Uh, I'm not that old yet. Uh, but we're going to go back and look at a, a, a thought from 1 Corinthians 13. We're going to look at this over the next few weeks. I, I thought building into uh, our uh, uh, Valentine season uh, that we would kind of work our way through uh, a couple of thoughts here. We're going to talk about the legacy, if you will, the legacy of love. The legacy, the legacy of love. In, in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, uh, verse number 7, I remember I was knocking doors one day. Uh, this story has, has many aspects to it. Uh, I was knocking doors one day with a, a teenager from our church in Orange, Texas. I happened to be one of the preacher's boys. And we were there uh, in this neighborhood, and we knocked on this door. Uh, and I'm going to be very careful the way I say this. Uh, but I don't know who this young lady was expecting, uh, but obviously it was not us. Uh, we knocked on the door, uh, and this young lady, probably 15, 16 years old, answers the door, hair up in a towel with a towel around her. And she answers the door that way, and here I'm standing with this teenage boy uh, at, at their front door. Well, she slings the door open. She sees it's not who she expected. She screams and turns and runs back into the house. So now we're standing, the door's wide open. And I, you know, I kind of looked at Patrick and I thought, you know, I don't want to just walk away and leave the door open. But I'm not going in there. <laughs> you know, I don't. Well, about that time her mom came up and 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 when her mom approached, I'm gonna be very careful the way I say this. But when her, mom, when her mom approached the door, you could tell very, care, very quickly uh, of what religious denomination she was of. Hair up in the bun, long skirt, uh, you know, that, you, you get it. I mean, you knew right away. So she walked up, and we began to have a conversation. And it, it went downhill from there. Uh, I'm just going to tell you that. It just it went uh, downhill very quickly. And, and the reason I'm telling that story now is to say this. We... We were talking about some different things, and, and, and she made a comment, and I, I quoted from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and she said, oh, I am very familiar with 1 Corinthians chapter 13. It's the love chapter. Well, I agree. It, it, it deals a lot with love. That's not the only thing in 1 Corinthians 13, uh, but it, that is considered the love chapter. Because in 1 Corinthians 13, we get a very good definition of what love really is. Now, as you read through 1 Corinthians 13, you'll find that the word love specifically probably uh, is not used the way we would see it. You read through there, and the word that keeps coming up is the word charity. So the first thing that we've got to understand is why they chose to use the word charity instead of the English word love. You understand when they translated that from the Greek and to English, why did they use this word charity? Well, when you look at the word charity and you look at the definition of that word charity, you'll find the definition is this, or, or it means this, it is the heart attitude that produces action. All right. So, so when you start talking about love in chapter 13, we're talking about an attitude of the heart that's going to produce something. It's going to, it's going to bring about an action in our life. It's, it's something that motivates us or gives us the passion to do something about what we love. Right? So it's just not a warm and fuzzy feeling. It's just not chocolates and roses. There's some substance to it. Right? So that's why he uses the word charity here through this passage of Scripture. So look at verse number 7, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. I'll spare you the reading of the whole chapter. Uh, but we're going to go to verse number 7. Uh, I'll tell you, right, we'll go to verse 4. And then we'll read down through verse number 7, all right? If you'd like to stand, you're welcome to do so. Uh, and we'll read a very familiar passage dealing with the definition or the characteristics or the legacy, if you will, of love. Look at this, verse 4. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Now look at verse 7. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth. 
all things. Let's pray. Father, again, we are thankful for the reading of your word. Pray that you'll help us tonight. One of the overarching attitudes of our heart that motivate us and bring us to a place of submission, service to you. This attitude of love. Father, I pray that you'll help us to understand this legacy, that you'll help us to embrace what true love really is. That we might have a heart for the ministry of Christ, the callings of God upon our life. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, you can be seated. So as we look at this passage, we go through and we see, and in, in starting at verse number 4, you, you see the things that it deals with that love is not. Uh, and we're not going to spend time dealing with all these, but we, we, could, we could go through and, and very quickly uh, just pinpoint a couple of things. It suffers long uh, and is kind. Charity envieth not. Doesn't desire the things of others. It vaunteth not itself. It's not puffed up. It's not prideful and selfish. Doesn't behave itself unseemly. Seeketh not, and we could go through and we could do, we're not going to do all of the negative side of that. What we'd like to do in going through this passage is get to verse number 7 where it begins to talk about what love really is. And he gives us four areas that defines the attitude of love in our heart and what we need to search and seek and see in this area of love. He starts off in verse number 7 and says this, our text for today, and beareth all things. And beareth all things. It's interesting to me when you begin to look at the, this list, usually when I look at a list in the Bible, one of the first things that I try to, to notice, well, the first thing that I notice is what does it actually say? And then number two, the second thing that I, I try to look for is, what does it seem like there's a repeat? If it says one thing and it kind of repeats itself later, why is there a difference there? What, what's the Lord trying to show us in, in contrast between those two? If you'll look at verse number seven, you'll find that the first one, beareth all things, is very, very similar to the last, which says, endureth all things. But when you begin to break that down and look at the contrast there, it begins to open up the, the legacy, or if you will, the beauty of what love really is. We just had a family that buried a grandfather, great-grandfather, husband, brother, and the list could go on. I think Ms. Christie said that he and his wife had been married 65 years. They had been together. 65 years. That's, that's just hard for me to, that's longer than I've been alive. That's hard for me to fathom. They've been married 65 years. And I couldn't help but think when I heard that Brother Bob had passed away. I couldn't help but think... What kind of love he and his wife had developed over 65 years? Oh, I'd love to sit down with Miss, with Miss Marlene and ask her what it means to say that love beareth all things. I'd love to hear her response to that. As we understand the definition of this word beareth all things, or this word beareth, the definition when I, when I looked it up kind of shocked me a little bit. Because when I first read it, I thought, that's odd. The definition of this word beareth literally means to cover over like a roof. To cover over or to hold back 
are to suffer. And I read that and I thought, how, how does that fit with love? To cover, to cover over, it beareth all things. You mean it covers over all things? You mean we're just supposed to overlook stuff? What does that mean? The more I read, the more I dug, the more the light began to come on for me about what this beareth all things really means. I'm going to share with you what I found. And I hope tonight we can just strengthen our relationships just a little bit more as we understand what God says, true Christian love will produce in our life. Number one, let's talk about this, the covering, the covering of love. Verse number seven, we read there already, it beareth all things. First Peter chapter four, verse number eight is another verse that came to mind almost immediately when I read that definition. First Peter chapter four, verse number eight, the Bible says this, uh, first Peter four, uh, verse number eight, the Bible says this, and above all things have fervent charity among yourselves. For charity shall cover the multitude of sins. Now, when we think of this idea cover, we want to make sure that we, we get the context or get the understanding correctly. We're not talking about just hiding things and overlooking things and turning a blind eye. to That's not what we're talking about. We're not talking about love looking the other way and just letting people get away with everything. That's not what we're dealing with in the idea of love. When we deal with this idea of the covering of love, it's, it's that idea, what, what is a covering? What is a roof for? What does a roof on a house do? It protects. Yes, it's a covering. But it protects. True love will protect those who are the object of that love. The covering of love is this. We, we want to understand that. Let me just give you a couple of ideas about this covering or this protection or, or this overwatch, if you will, of love. Number one, Christ covers our sins with His blood. When we see the covering here, it's Christ giving Himself in ransom for us. He covered. He, he didn't turn a blind eye to our sin. He, 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 didn't, he didn't walk away and say, well, I don't want to understand. I don't want to know about that. But in His blood, He covered over that sin. He forgave that sin. Here, He protects us from the judgment of that sin. We understand what true love is all about. It's about that covering of love. It's about protecting those from, from what they can't even see and understand. We'll, we'll get to this in a minute. It's about going the extra mile. It's about putting ourselves on the line. It, it's about taking the hurt ourselves and, and, and understanding, hey, as we truly love others, it beareth all things, and we put ourselves out there for them, and we show them and demonstrate to them that we care for them. Love beareth all things. Covering of love, number one, is Christ covering our sins. We see the picture of that. And I think in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, we can find this, this thought that conviction, conviction protects us from sin. What do you mean, preacher? It means the Holy Spirit of God dealing with us in love and convicting us of sin and letting us know that's wrong. He's doing that because He loves us and He wants to cover us and protect us from the result of sin in our lives. We've got to get back to this place where we understand that the covering of love, it's not just accepting everything and looking the other way and accepting sin and accepting people where they are and what they're doing, uh, but it's loving them and giving them and sharing with them the truth of the gospel and sharing with them the truth of the Word of God that can bring conviction in their life that will protect them from sin and shame and heartache in their life. Well, then I thought about this, covering of love. One day the rapture, one day the rapture will remove us from sin. Mm. How do I get amen out of a Baptist, amen? One of these days, one of these days that's that trumpet sounding and we are out of here. 
But true love says, I just don't want to hang, I just don't want to hang around and wait until I'm out of here. I want to work the works of the Lord until He calls me home. Why? Because Christ gave Himself for me, and when I accepted Christ as my Savior, He forgave my sin. He covered over me. He can do the same for others. I want to share the gospel with them so they can hear about the same love uh, that helped me. Hey, I I want to share the gospel. I want to share the Word of God with others uh, that the Holy Spirit can take that and convict them and let them know of their sin that can draw them into repentance that would help them to avoid the results and the, the shame and the heartache of sin and it would prepare them one day to meet the Lord face to face. Charity, true love, beareth all things, covers over, gives protection. The greatest protection that we can give someone is the gospel of Christ. Number two, talks about bearing all things, the covering of love. Number two, I I think we can also see in this idea of covering over or holding back or suffering, I I think number two, you see the calling of love. The calling of love. Because what we see in this calling, we see a a calling of love to to, to come out of sin and to come out of difficulty. And and we see a calling of this, this love is suffering and, and hurting and warning and has a heart for others. It ought to break our heart to see what's going on in others' lives. We ought to look at others, not with condemnation, with a broken heart. Not with self-righteousness or indignation, but with compassion, concern, and a brokenness. A brokenness to help them But you know, we cannot help others until we first help ourselves. Perfect illustration of this, it's an amazing thing. I I have flown a little bit, not much. Uh, But we were flying, we were about to take off from Indianapolis, and we were about to cross the big pond. We were headed for the Philippines. We were headed for Japan. We were going to land there, you know, the Philippines. So we had a 13-hour flight. And in this 13-hour flight, most of that's going to be over water. That'll do something for you when you stop and think about that. So we got ready to take off, and of course, the little, uh, what what do you call them now? I can't call call them uh, stewards. Flight attendants, that's what you call them now. That's the correct word. The flight attendant came on the little intercom. They began to give us the flight instructions. Now, Brother Jeff and I happened to be fortunate enough, number one, to be sitting on the exit row. Now, if you don't understand what that means, for those of us that are my size, you probably know what that means. That exit row, you get a little bit of extra leg room because the exit row, literally, you're sitting right next to the emergency exit. Amen. First one off the... Anyway. <laughs> Look, if they got to use that emergency, I don't want to be on the plane if they got to use emergency exit. I'm just saying, okay? But we're sitting on the exit row. And if you sit on the exit row, by the way, they give you this little extra card that you got to read. You got to read this card because literally that card says if this plane goes down and, and, and the flight attendant can't open that door, then you've got to agree that you'll open that door for others to get off the plane. I looked at it, went, yeah, sure. Put it back. <laughs> you know, amen. But she's going through, I don't know, a guy or girl, I don't remember. The flight attendant is going through the whole, you know, safety message. You know, I I started listening. When they got to the water uh, flotation device under the seat, I started paying attention. (laughs) And then she said this, or they said this, if the cabin loses air pressure, the oxygen masks will drop from the ceiling. When the oxygen mask drops from the ceiling, you take the mask and first you put it on yourself. If there are any children with you or someone flying with you that needs your assistance, you first place 
the mask on yourself. And then you place it on whom, whoever you need to help. Because if you don't, and there is a true, terrible emergency, you will probably pass out trying to put the mask on someone else. First, you must help yourself before you can help someone else. I also saw this evident in a, in a, a class that I, was, that I was privy to. I saw taking place a, a lifeguard training class. And they were giving instructions about someone when they were drowning in, in a pool. One of the things they said about that was, you wait till they stop struggling before you jump in. Which is completely counterintuitive to what we want to do. They're in danger. we got to go save them. But if you jump in too soon, they're going to take you down with them. So you got to wait. you got to protect yourself first if you're going to help them. See, see here's the thing. We, we, we've got to get to this point. And, and we can, the, the idea of love, we, we get so focused on others. And we, we need to be. We need to be focused on others. Folks are dying and going to hell all around us. And we need to be focused on them. But we also need to understand, first, we've got to focus on ourselves. First, we've got to forgive ourselves. I was counseling with a young man in, in eastern Kentucky years ago. He had just gotten out of prison. He came in my office and he sat down in prison. That sounds official. He had just gotten out of the county jail. Makes it a little better, right? And, and he came to my office, and, and he, he was guilty of, of what he was charged with. He did his time. Uh, you know, there was no question about all of that. And he really, had a, he really wanted to get right with God. He, he really wanted to get, you know, he understood that he was wrong in what he had done and, and all this stuff that had happened. He came in my office. We sat down and began to talk. The man literally, the man was broken. We talked for probably 20 minutes. Finally, I called his name and I said, Sir, it sounds to me like your problem is you are having a hard time forgiving yourself. And as I, he just, he, it, it's almost like the color just drained out of his face. His eyes got this big and he, he looked back across the desk at me and he said, Preacher, I'd never thought about that before. I said, sir, let me ask you a couple of questions. Number one, has God forgiven you? Yes, sir, I have, I have asked him to forgive me. I have, yes, sir, I know he has. I said, well, if God's forgiven you, then you must find a way to forgive yourself. True love comes from a heart that's in tune with Christ. And we're never going to be able to love others and have this relationship that we need with others until we first take care of us. The calling, number one, the calling of love, love beareth all things, first is a calling to forgive ourselves. I know without a doubt, there's no question in my mind at all that everyone in this room needs forgiveness. And the best thing that we can do is go to the Lord and ask Him to forgive us personally, accept that forgiveness, and then forgive ourselves. And if we can do that, then... We can begin to forgive others. But there's an aspect of this, this calling of forgiveness, this calling of love, uh, th this, this calling of covering over and, and, and protecting and holding back that attack and, and suffering in the place of others. There's, there's an interesting idea. Take your Bible, if you will. Turn to, Phile uh, to Philemon. Philemon. If you'll find the book of Hebrews uh, and turn left. It's just right there tucked right in there between, uh, between uh, Hebrews uh, and the book of Titus. That helps you. 
Amen. The book of Philemon. The book of Philemon is a very interesting little letter that the Apostle Paul wrote to a friend of his by, Phil, by the name of Philemon about a runaway slave. This runaway slave, Onesimus, had run away from his master. He'd escaped, or he had run away from his duties, if you will, his responsibilities. And in his running, undoubtedly he had gotten, he'd gotten uh, in trouble and, and was in jail because he met Paul in jail through that meeting with Paul. Onesimus got saved. So Paul sends Onesimus back to Philemon, this master that he had run away from. But he says something to Philemon that I think that we need to understand in this idea of love. Look at what he says in verse number 18. Now we're talking about love beareth all things, covers over, protects, holds back. If he hath wronged thee, now Paul has sent this letter to Philemon. If he hath wronged thee, if Onesimus hath wronged thee, or oweth thee aught, put that on mine account. Onesimus, uh, 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 Philemon, you, you, I'll pay it. You, you just charge it to me. See, we see love in action here. We see Paul reaching out. Now, we're going somewhere with this. You just hang on. Because the last point's the kicker, if you will. Paul is telling, telling Philemon, he's saying, listen, I love this young man and I'll put my reputation, I'll put my name, I'll put my life on the line for him. I am going to go and put my name on the line. I am going to cover over this problem that he's had. I am going to pay his debt. Does that sound familiar? Isn't that what Jesus did for us? As Christians... We ought to be willing to put ourselves on the line for others. I don't like the way they smell. Well, let's lead them to Christ and maybe we can take care of that other later. I don't like the way they dress. Well, let's lead them to Christ and maybe the Holy Spirit can take care of some of that other stuff. Well, I don't like the way they act. Well, let's lead them to Christ and get them in the Word of God. And maybe the Bible could, can, can uh, uh, help them to see how they need to act and how they need to live. See, we've got to get to this place, the calling of love. The idea of beareth all things is we need to be the ones that approach others and, and put our necks out for them and go the extra mile for them. Why? Because we have a calling of God. The legacy of love is this, that we will bear all things. Oh, no, preacher, I thought that was just toward Christians. Oh, it ought to start at the house of God. It goes way beyond that. And finally, let me get to the last point. We're done. You understand true love. True love is going to cost you something. True love is going to cost you something. My wife and I, Got married 33 years ago. Put a ring on her finger, told her I loved her. The joke goes like this. I don't know how many times I've told her I loved her since then. And, you know, if she were to get a little aggravated and come to me and say, You don't ever tell me I, you love me. The response is, Well, I told you 33 years ago, if anything changes, I'll let you know. It's going to be a cold ride home, I'm just saying. You notice I didn't say that, David. I am not that dumb. What we need to understand is love is going to cost us something. 
If we think we can enter into this idea of love, the love of God for nothing, we're fooling ourselves. Let me give you just a couple of th- things here. Number one, you understand that it costs Christ everything. T- take your Bible, go to Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter number 22. We find Christ in the Garden of Gethsemane. And in verse number 42, we find this. He's he's responding and he's saying this. Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. You see, true love cost Christ everything. Now, he's our example. And he submitted everything that he was everything that He is, everything that He ever would be, He submitted that to the will of God and said, because I love them, I'm willing to pay the cost. Number two, we can understand that love cost Paul some things. Now we've already read in Philemon, Well, Paul said, look, if Onesimus owes you anything, put it on my account. Now, that was, you go back and you study that whole relationship thing between Paul and and Philemon, that was kind of like Paul saying, you owe me, son. You owe me big. I'm calling it in right here. Because I love him enough I'm willing to put my, myself on the line for him. Take your Bible, look in 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter number 9. 1 Corinthians chapter number 9, verse number 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse number 12, just... Look at the verse. If others be partakers of this power over you, are not we rather? Nevertheless, we have not used this power, but suffer all things, lest we should hinder the gospel of Christ. See, love brings us to a place to where we understand that we, again, we're back to that whole idea. We would rather take the hurt than to cause someone to miss hearing the gospel. I would rather to be misunderstood. I would rather for me to be lied on. I would rather for me to be misused, deceitfully used, than to hinder someone hearing the gospel. Oh, I may be right. And sometimes in our defense of ourselves, and sometimes in our demand for being right, we can hinder the cause of Christ. How many times in the Scriptures do we see good men, right men, suffering silently for the cause of Christ? So that brings us to the third thought. And here's the big one. What's true godly love going to cost us? I I said this on our live stream, on our on our discipleship tonight this afternoon. We live in a we live in a participation trophy society where nobody wants to sacrifice. And nobody wants to do the hard works that, that's necessary to see great things done. But if we're going to see great things accomplished. If we're going to see Calvary Baptist Church grow. If we're going to see people come to know Christ as their Savior. It's going to cost us something. Number one, it's going to cost us the same thing it cost Christ. Maybe not the blood, but it's going to cost us a surrender 
of self. It's going to cost us surrendering to the will of the Father. True love, true godly love beareth all things. Are we willing to surrender? What is it? What is it that if God came, to, if God sent an angel, now you just bear with me on this one. If God sent an angel from heaven to you tonight and said, you do this, what would it be that you'd have to say, can't do it? No, nah, no, nah, ain't doing that. How submitted are we to the will of God for our life? Now, most of us are not, <laughs> most of us are not going to encounter an angel on the way home. But we all have a Bible. And we all have the Holy Spirit of God working in our lives. What's it going to cost us? What are we willing to give? How far are we willing to go? All right, let, let, me, let me turn the tables on you and be a little bit more pointed and maybe a little bit more, uh, yeah, that way. What are you willing to do for your children? To see them walk with God and do right. See, we've got to get to the place where we understand that this life is not a life of ease and it's not a life of just tiptoeing through the tulips and it's not a life of just having everything we want and everything being rosy. It's a life that says we want to surrender ourselves to God and whatever God allows us to deal with and go through, we'll do it with our eyes focused on Him, knowing there's a legacy of love that says somebody needs Christ and maybe, just maybe, through all of this, I can share the gospel with them and they can come to know Christ as their Savior. Love beareth all things. Now, I hope tonight you look at that a little differently than you did when we got here. I hope tonight we understand the covering of love. I hope tonight we understand that calling that all of us are involved in this idea of godly love and that we understand that, yes, it's going to cost us something to serve God. But the benefits are out of this world. What are you willing to give to serve Christ? Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. We start dealing with this idea of the legacy of love. We look at our own relationships. We look at our own relationships. And we begin to evaluate where I am and what I would do. Number one, what would I do for these two, these, two, these two young ladies sitting here on the front row? What would I be willing to give for them? I'll tell you right now. Nothing's worth what they are to me. Nothing. I'd give it all. Why? Because I love them. But do I love others enough? Maybe not the same strength, the same way that I love these two. But I love them enough to give the gospel to them. To seek to help them to grow in grace. To do the hard work. It's necessary to see them grow. Father, we are thankful for the day. Help us tonight. Father, help us to understand what godly love is all about. Help us to realize that that godly love goes so far beyond what we understand and what we can see with our own eyes. But while we find it easy to pledge and, and, and dedicate ourselves to those we know and those we love, we are called by God to put ourselves on the line for others. 
share the gospel with them, pray for them, call out to God for them, and live in a manner before them that they can see that we truly care. Father, I pray tonight you will break our hearts for others. Let's all stand. Heads are bowed and eyes Are we? Are we loving like we should? Are we reaching out to others, to those around us, to those of our family? just for a moment uh, I'm going to ask this question uh, you've had time to consider and think about pray about for the landing and what's going on with him uh, there in Cambodia here's what I would like to suggest I would like to suggest that we take the hundred and two dollars and seventy cents uh, and then we add uh, enough to it from the mission fund to make it five hundred dollars uh, and then we put that to toward by the landing and uh, and their medical expenses uh, that uh, I would suggest that uh, we've kind of given you some of the details already uh, but we will uh, give you an opportunity uh, to ask any questions that you might have or, co or comments uh, about that uh, we've kind of laid out the the expenditures kind of where we are financially in the mission fund uh, so we'll do it this way if you're interested uh, in doing that we need a motion second to go ahead and do that I got hands all over the building. Uh, I saw Brother, Brother Phil Jaco first and Brother John. We'll take those two. Uh, now, we have a motion second to do that. Is there any questions or discussion that, needs to, that, that, that you'd like to give? Someone completely understanding all that, that, that's happening. We're going to take $102.70 from the leftover designated funds and then make up the difference of that to get it to $500. My math is not that good on the fly. To get the $500 and then send that, that $500 to Brother Landing and for the medical expense. Is that good? You got that? You got it? You think? Okay. <laughs> She'll ask me tomorrow. What was this? 
All right, we have a motion in a second that we do that. All in favor? No, I didn't oppose. All right, we will make sure. I will let him know that we're going to do that, and we'll send that into his mission board. That's the easiest way to get it to him, and they'll funnel it through the right channels uh, and get it to him for that. That'll, that'll pay for probably a little, over, little uh, just about half uh, of what's going to be needed by the time you do the medications in the next month or the next few months as well. I just, when I read that uh, in, in, in their prayer letter, uh, I read that he had been sick, and then I got a message from him uh, yesterday uh, that kind of talked about uh, him being in the hospital. I just, the Lord just kind of pricked my heart and said, you know, you've been asking if, if there's something you could do. There it is. Now, if you'd like to give, I'm, and I'm just going to add this, uh, we, we voted to do $500. If you'd like to give extra, if you'll just put his name on it, when you put it in the box back there, we'll make sure that it goes with the 500. All right? We don't want to give any. We don't want to keep anybody from giving if they wanted to. All right. So if you'll just do that, drop it in the box. We'll make sure it gets there. I appreciate your spirit. And I appreciate your heart. I appreciate your heart for missions uh, and for others. Amen. All right. Let's stand. We're going to dismiss tonight. Uh, what a joy it has been to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. I uh, hope you had a good day. Uh, we've had a great day. I hope you have a great week. Uh, a lot of things going on, uh, going forward. Uh, do remember this, this one more prayer request that, that I just thought about. Pray for the O'Briens. Uh, Brother Roger and Miss Rebecca, they've been having automobile ve uh, 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 vehicle uh, difficulties. Uh, his truck uh, threw a lifter. Uh, and I think that's their only means of transportation. So you pray for them. Uh, I know he's trying to get that fixed. I'm going to be talking with him uh, tomorrow, he don't know it yet. Uh, well, he may now if we're still online. But uh, we're, we're going <laughs> to, uh, I'm going to be talking to him tomorrow and find out if there's something I can do to help him. Uh, but you pray for them that they'll get all that together uh, and, and get it fixed up. So uh, I'm just, I missed, I missed their faces this morning. All right. Let's go, Lord, in prayer and dismiss the service tonight. Again, good to see everybody. Glad that you were here. As we go, the Lord, in prayer, Brother Tony, dismiss us, please, sir.